All right, we're live. It's been a couple of crazy days. The last video I did uh, was kind of on spec, kind of like how we could actually build uh, build a Docker runtime for mass transit and kind of seeing how it would work. And it was kind of proof of concept at the time, but uh, it's definitely come a long way. I definitely spent way too much time over the last 48 hours. Well, wait a minute, what's Friday night? All day yesterday until 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, okay, so, you know, definitely a lot of time. But uh, what I'm going to go over today is the sample Twitch app that we had before. You know, we were using a number of different Docker composers with that for things like MongoDB and Redis and, and various things. Uh, Quartz, you know, we were running Quartz in a separate service and it was all kind of bouncing all over the place. So what I want to do today is kind of take and look at how using the new mass transit platform Docker images, I could kind of clean that up and, and get it to where we can run the services with a single Docker Compose, both the website, the service endpoints, and, the, um, and then have all our supporting services like Quartz part of that, uh, part of that build. So I'm going to kind of jump into that. Um, if you're not familiar with Mass Transit, it's uh, masstransitproject.com. Honestly, if you're not familiar with Mass Transit, I would go back to the beginning of the series because this is going to deep dive into some pretty pretty technical stuff really quick. But uh, if you're familiar with Docker and RabbitMQ and have a good background at .NET, eh, you might be doing fine. So, so I have this the Twitch project open. And if we remember, we have multiple services in here. We have the warehouse service, which you know, if we open that up, a whole bunch of program.cs, a whole bunch of settings, a whole bunch of references, instrumentation, just tons and tons and tons of stuff in there. Logging, just the, the whole ball of wax. Everything is in there. Um, and that's duplicated in sample service program CS. I mean, basically, it's a cut and paste of the other one. So what I want to try to do is get rid of that duplication and kind of jump into this with a standard setup. And by standard setup, I mean, hopefully this will work the way I want it to. Um, first, a little background from the last session. I did create a few different Docker images. Um, Mass Transit Platform is a pre-built baseline for deploying services. Um, I've created a couple of default container configs for both RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ that configure all those services to run and be part of a part of use by Mass Transit. Uh, I also created a SQL Server config that is designed for Quartz.net, and I have a Mass Transit Quartz container image that runs Quartz on the Mass Transit platform as just a container that you can drop in. So I want to start by looking at the Docker Compose we had before and kind of modifying it and getting it up to speed so that we can pull in a lot of these services that we were doing before. So if we look in the Docker Compose we had previously, we have, I'm just gonna make this half size because I don't need it that big. Um, we have a Twitch RabbitMQ server, okay? And we have a Redis server for, I think we're using that for a Saga repository or something. Um, that's a good start, but we also had a MongoDB instance. We had a, a SQL instance for Quartz. We were running Quartz in another window. We were running multiple console windows to get all this stuff up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a different Docker Compose just to get some additional pieces out of it. So I've, I've worked through a bunch of this stuff already. I have RabbitMQ. I have SQL Server, I have Quartz, so let's start with that. So we will yank a number of these things out of here. So we have services, we have RabbitMQ. It's running from the Mass Transit RabbitMQ latest image. Um, we're going to need to configure a network, and we'll call our network something for us, something specific to us. Um, change a couple values here. We're going to call this network Twitch. And we'll have to make sure we change that. So I have RabbitMQ. So the Mass Transit RabbitMQ Docker image is that Docker image that I created. 
Uh, the ports that we're going to expose are there. We're going to have a health check on it that checks to see if it's healthy. Okay, that's the first service. Uh, I think I need to indent something here. I think I have this right. Oh, this is one in. Okay, so services. Hostname RabbitMQ. It defaults to the service name, so it doesn't matter. Um, networks Twitch. I'm also going to pull down this SQL Server Quartz image, and I'm going to use that for Quartz to be able to talk to. So, hey, Albert. How you doing, man? So I'm going to update that to be on the network Twitch. It uses port 1433. I don't need it outside the cluster, but I want to know which port I have. Um, and then I'm going to have my Quartz service, which, again, is this Mass Transit Quartz latest. It's available on Docker Hub. Um, I have the App Insights instrumentation key. Uh, I have... A, service name for monitoring. I have a connection string to the database. We can see that this is TCP connection string is SQL Server. So that host name should resolve to this SQL Server. I have a database name. This is just the default configuration string that's passed in to the Quartz service. I'm going to make sure I put it on the right network because our network is Twitch. Um, I'm going to I'm going to expose the ports just so I can check the health of that, just for no reason other than that. Um, the host name is Rabbit. My host name is, this will need to be Rabbit. Um, yeah. Actually, we're just going to call it RabbitMQ. Yeah, great. OK. RabbitMQ. We don't need this because we have that already. We also were using Redis, so I'm not going to specify a container name here. Um, but we were just pulling down that Redis instance. I think we were also using a MongoDB, and I'm trying to remember where that was. Um, I think if I go into the services, I can see where that was. I'm pretty sure we weren't using Postgres. That's one thing I remember. Um, but I do think we were using Mongo. Let me check the sample Twitch. Yeah, that was just RabbitMQ and that. Um, how do I know the, uh, I don't know where the container config for this one came from. Let's see here. Oh, I have a lot of containers out there. A lot of containers. Okay, that's not going to get me what I need. Um. I'm trying to think where I had that uh, image. Because within the Twitch sample, I had a different Docker Compose for Mongo, because I was using the MongoDB repository. I wish I knew where that was. Mass Transit MongoDB integration tests. OK, so let's go find that. Code, Mass Transit, source, Mongo, persistence. Mon mass Transit, MongoDB tests, and there's a Docker Compose there. OK, so what was I doing? I was just pulling, it looks like, Mongo. Great. OK, so I can pull that into my code. And so I have Mongo also as part of this stand-up, so I don't have to set it up separately. And I don't need a container name here. Uh, ports, a range of ports there. Okay, so I have Redis, Mongo, Quartz, SQL Server, RabbitMQ. Everything looks good there. Um, I do think I have to put them on the network. I don't know if I have to do that or not, but why not, right? Make sure they're consistent. Okay. All right, that's what we have from the example. So now if we go back to our sample Twitch, we have that Docker Compose that we just edited. And again, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I've, I've had this, these bits are about an hour and a half old. So if this all explodes, you know, we can always just laugh about it later. Um, and I'm just going to try to run it. I'm just going to Docker Compose up this and see if it runs. So we're creating some stuff. 
like Mongo's starting up. Looks like Quartz is starting up. Trying to connect to RabbitMQ. SQL Server's starting up. Like Quartz is still trying to connect to RabbitMQ. SQL Server's still starting up. Nothing looks bad yet. Okay, RabbitMQ just started up, so that's good. Okay, looks like Quartz started up, declared some exchanges, bound some exchanges, bound some consumers. Quartz scheduler started up, Quartz is up and running, talking to SQL Server. Okay, I think everything's up and running. I think we have, I think we have code. Uh, is this VS Code? No, I don't use VS Code. This is just the console and writer. <laughs> My text editor is Sublime Text. Oh yeah, I don't use, I don't even have VS Code installed. Sorry, it's not my thing. I, I don't like it. <laughs> um, so I have these samples here. I mean, theoretically I should be able to go out and run these if I have the ports exposed, that's what I need to remember. Um, so with that running in the background and my, let's go back, let's create another window to the sample Twitch folder. So let's go into the warehouse service because we know that worked. Um, we should just be able to do a .NET run here. I think all of our dependencies are up and running. Okay, starting host, connected to RabbitMQ. Um, yeah, all of our message types are in there. Yeah, that looks good. Well, that still works. That's connected to Rabbit. Let's find out for sure. Let's connect to RabbitMQ locally with the management interface. And we can see that our connections, we have two connections. One from .NET and another one from .NET, I'm sure. Thank you for that, that's always awesome. Um, is it .NET, RabbitMQ, these channels. If we look at the queues, we can see we have a Quartz queue. Quartz has a channel on it with the consumers configured. It has a prefetch count of four. I guess that's what we set. Yeah, so Quartz is up and running. It's on the same instance. It has that endpoint. The allocate inventory allocation states are right there. Okay, so far so good. So we set up a new Docker Compose. We're running Quartz in a container that's built on the Mass Transit platform. It's running against a RabbitMQ instance that's kind of standardized for Mass Transit. It has all the appropriate plugins installed and all that good stuff. Uh, we're running against SQL Server that's tuned to Quartz. So we have that SQL Server instance. I know Quartz can work with Postgres and other things, and I might make other containers to do that, but you know, really it's I, I need this stuff to test locally and I would probably run against like an Azure SQL or something. But, you know, I don't know. It just depends on what's cheaper and what makes more sense operationally, what you're comfortable with. Okay, so that's awesome. I mean, that that actually worked. So that's one of, that was like my first concern is, will that work? Um, now our warehouse service is a standalone service. It has consumers and sagas in it. Um, and it's talking to RabbitMQ, and it uses the scheduler because its state machine uses the scheduler. Now, as we saw, that had that program CS, it has its old console service. What I want to do now is I want to try to take those components that were part of the code base. So like all the service is doing is instantiating the components inside warehouse.components. That's all that's happening there. The service has no other code in it other than some host, you know, all the plumbing to make it run as a service, all the duplication, all of that. So what I want to do now is I want to try to make the warehouse components run without having to build that service. And we want to do that with the mass transit platform Docker image. So this is where it's going to be fun because this is, this is where we're cutting new ground here. So I'm going to go in, first I'm going to go out here and I'm going to stop this service. Application shut down, closes all the consumers, great. 
And now I'm going to go into that warehouse dot components. And now the question is, is do I want to put this here or should I create another project for this? Let's create another project because we don't want to have to load all this stuff in to test our components if we actually had a unit test project. So let's create a new project. We're going to create a class library. We're going to call it warehouse dot. Um, I don't know. Let's just call it warehouse dot startup. Now, nah, yeah, sure. Why not? I don't. I don't really care. I don't. Doesn't matter to me. Um, let's create it with net standard two one for fun. See if it works. If it doesn't, let's not get. Let's not get froggy. Let's just. Let's. Let's just kind of chill. So we're gonna have warehouse startup. New project. And I'm doing this because I want to kind of keep it separate because I want to still be able to run the old service, but I want to be able to show how the two compare and contrast once we get going. Um, and I'm going to add a NuGet package to this. So the NuGet package I'm going to add is mass tra and I'm going to switch some of this stuff to the pre-release because all of this stuff is built against pre-release builds of mass transit. I haven't released 625 yet. Um, so mass transit .platform .abstractions. I finally succumbed to the dot abstractions extension for whatever reason, I don't know, but it just made sense. So I'm going to update that. It's going to throw some package references in there for me. And now I'm going to create the warehouse startup colon I platform startup. So iPlatform Startup is an interface that's part of that abstractions. It lets me wire in my code to the mass transit platform. And we're gonna clean up that one line of highlighted text. That's awesome. Let's load the entire Java engine to do that. I have this habit of like always cleaning up code. It's just ridiculous. Um, now we have to look at what was in our warehouse service before so that we can add that in. And I don't know if I bumped my font size before shooting the video. Let me crank that up a little bit so that people aren't squinting at the seven at the lower bitrate code. Okay, a little better. Let me get this NuGet stuff out of the way. Okay, I have my platform, my warehouse startup which gets two things. It gets a configure mass transit where I can take the service collection configurator and the service collection for services. So I can do a few things there. In the previous warehouse program, I was doing add consumers from namespace and add saga state machine. So I'm gonna take that code and I'm gonna put that right here. The configurator is CFG. Now I'm going to have to add some references here, obviously. I'm going to have to add a reference to sample.component. Nope, 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 nope. Warehouse.components. That's going to give me my pieces that I need here. All right. I got my Mongo connection, localhost, allocations. Great. That looks good. Um, were there any other dependencies that I had in here? No, nope, this was all just cruft of setting up a service. It's just all that junk. Um, I did specify kebab case. The platform defaults to kebab case, so we're good there. I just like to say kebab case, so I don't know if anybody noticed that, but I just like to say it. Um, oh, we are using the message scheduler quartz, but we'll take care of that later because we don't want to tie ourselves to that just yet, but we'll get there. Um, but we're gonna, okay, I think that's actually all we need out of that service. Let's see if there were any app settings that we needed. Well, we had our RabbitMQ configurations. We had whatever that was. I don't even know what that was. That must have been cut and pasted from something. Um, yeah, because I don't need any of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna not bother with any of that for now. So I'm gonna close that out, close that out. Rename my file to match. I have my warehouse startup. It's public. We're good to go. I think we're better. I don't think there's much else to do here. Um, okay. I'm going to not worry about whether that builds because I'm sure it does. Um, about the only other thing I think I want to do, just, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, so now I have to go out and I have to create a Docker file for this service. 
So I'm going to go into warehouse.startup. And I need to create a new Docker file for this. So I'm obviously going to copy one, an existing one because that's the easiest way I know of to do it. And they'll, all these examples will be up there to cut and paste once they're up there. And if I've learned anything in supporting mass transit is people want stuff to cut and paste. So I totally get it. I'm the same way. So might as well just go with it. So I'm going to, first I'm going to copy the Docker ignore because .NET really freaks out if you try to build without Docker ignore. It copies all sorts of stuff that you don't want. Um, and then I'm going to copy the Docker file, and then I'll modify that Docker file here. So if I go into Writer, Writer actually does syntax highlight all this stuff. So if I go into the Docker file, I can see that I have my CS proj. It's going to build it, it's going to publish it, and it's going to run it. And it's just going to go from the current directory. You can see I'm using Mass Transit Platform Latest. That's it. I, I didn't change a line here. I just literally copied it in. There's nothing to change. Um, so now to test that, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to say Docker build. And I'm going to tag this as Twitch. I don't know. Let's see here. Twitch slash warehouse. Seems reasonable enough. Build it. So it's going to do a restore. Okay, so I do have to modify the Docker file because I have dependencies. Okay, this is this is good. This is always a fun thing. So it's skipping the project. It's gonna it's gonna do the restore and it's gonna fail anyway. So yeah. Okay, so we're gonna blow up because we don't have all the right files there. Not completely unexpected. So now, because we have to do multiple folders in it, we are going to move that Docker file up to the parent directory. <laughs> and we are going to move Docker file to dot dot slash Docker file dash warehouse. We're going to go back up there and we are going to edit. Now we're going to edit that Docker file. So because we have different projects and different dependencies, we have to go modify it. If we had put all our code in one project, we'd have been fine, but we didn't. We're, we're well factored, you know, so we have to do a couple of other things. So we're going to modify this to include, we are going to copy, um, What's our project? Uh, dot slash warehouse dot contracts star dot CS proj dot slash warehouse dot contracts dot slash star dot CS proj. And we're going to need a couple of these because we're going to have warehouse components. Then we're going to have warehouse startup. That's going to move all of those down there. And then we're going to do a .NET restore on, now I got to remember how to specify the folder. Let's say it's slash where. Proj. This is where I'm either going to go sideways or I'm going to just lose my mind. So this is where I think we can do, we have to do this is probably going to just create a complete disaster of biblical proportions. What was it called? Twitch slash warehouse. I think that works. Now I have to tell it the Docker file name and then the path. I think this will blow up, yeah. Um, I think it's dash F, that's right. 
dash F. Let's see if this works. Yeah, I can't restore the switch, whatever. Project file does not exist. Okay, sorry. This this was something that I didn't fully expect. So, project or solution. So I'm telling it the options. I'm telling that. I have to put all the options first. Oh. Warehouse dot startup slash warehouse start start um, Oh yeah, that that's also correct. Yeah, I shouldn't have anything on the copy. Good call. Um, and I think this has to be at the end. Dot slash warehouse startup slash warehouse startup. Yeah, let's try this. Okay, a little bit better. Hasn't crashed yet. That's a good sign. <laughs> Thanks for calling out the wild card cap. That helps a lot because that was probably it. Yeah, okay, so by specifying that project, it automatically pulled the other ones too, so. Now we're building, publishing. Oh my gosh, okay, so we're close. What are the odds this is gonna work? Anybody wanna place some bets? Um, yeah, I'm curious, let's find out. Um, let's go back to our uh, Project here, okay. Quartz is still running, happy as can be, just sitting there doing its thing. Rock on. We'll go ahead and shut all that down. I need to like learn how to stop just one thing in my compose, but I'll have to get there eventually. Probably involves some GUI tool. Okay, so where are we at? Now we want to update and we want to add our service that we just built. So it should look a lot like the Quartz one because they're built on the same runtime. So I'm gonna add it at the bottom and we're gonna call it Warehouse and we're gonna call this Twitch slash Warehouse colon latest. So we always pull the latest. Um, we don't need a Quartz connection string because we aren't the Quartz service. We aren't the Quartz service, we're the Warehouse and I want to set quartz equal to quartz. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm using the quartz Q endpoint name by default. But I want to tell the platform that I have quartz and it's at this endpoint. And quartz is enough. It will figure it out based on the transport environment wherever. Um, and I think that's enough. I want to output my warehouse to 5,480 just so I can check the health of it if I want to. Warehouse, image, environment, networks, ports, great. Okay, let's see what happens. So I've ported my warehouse over. Warehouse looks like it's starting up. Uh, I, yeah, it, I think it did. <laughs> it's flying by. Until Rabbit launches, everything else is just noise, so. I think in another window I can do like Docker PS and uh, that other stuff to make it go. I gotta learn that stuff. I've been using Docker for less than two weeks, so definitely appreciate the corrections. Okay, RabbitMQ is now up. Quartz is now up. Okay, so the Quartz service started. What about my warehouse service? Where you at, buddy? Come on. 
So if I go to, oh, hey, there's the warehouse. Okay, the warehouse connected to Rabbit. It created its allocation state exchange. It has contracts. It bound, it, it looks like it's running. It has the two queues. Quartz is running. Okay, so my warehouse is now up and running. Um, where's my .NET Core window that I did from before? Um, yeah, okay. So like, here's the startup when I did the .NET run. I want to like compare these side by side because I'm curious. Okay, so there's when my warehouse started before and here's where it started now. So once I connected, I declared the same exchanges. I see the same message types. Allocate state, allocate inventory, contracts. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. I think it did the same thing. I think we're good to go. We got pre we got different prefetch counts. Okay, that's interesting. Before we had fours, now we have 16 and four. So our prefetch counts are different when we ran with .NET run versus running in here. And I think that's because my machine has six cores. And when I'm running as .NET, it isn't running as a container. And I don't know how many cores it exposes to a Docker VM by default, but I'm guessing it's one considering the prefetch count of four, because usually it's CPU count times four, but I'm not positive. Um, okay, so that's, that's honestly pretty cool. Um, how do I merge this back? Dang it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm an iTerm noob too, and I've only been using it for 10 plus years. So, so that's pretty stokable. I mean, I've got my warehouse running. It's running in the platform. I didn't have to use any of that service code. I have the same capabilities that are there. Now let's go over into this window and let's just bring up everything else with .NET run and see how it interoperates. I think it'll still connect to Rabbit. Um, I, I think it will, I guess we'll find out. Um, so let's switch to my, what is it? My sample.service. Let's just .NET run this one and see if it works. Okay, it connected. It's doing its thing. Um, okay, we're going to go look at our sample API now and see if it runs. Oh, yeah, it's up and running. Okay. So let me create my test app here or go to my test app. I created that console. Enter number of orders to send. Let's just send one. Let's not get overly eager here in the front. Oh, hey, okay. So we're talking to Mongo. We're doing some collection stuff. Our warehouse is doing its thing. It's sending messages. We're scheduling events with Quartz. Our order faulted. Oh, because we fault every fourth order. So yeah, it should have faulted. So now if I do four orders, I should have three succeeded and one faulted. We're creating allocations. We're doing our messages. We should have after 10 seconds, it should release our inventory. We never allocated inventory before because we faulted. Oh, we got an error. What do we got? Disconnected a timeout. MongoDB driver. Hmm. Interesting. Did we retry? Server selector cluster 127 zeros. Oh, because we're using 127001 for MongoDB. So that was one thing we have to change. Um, we need to tell it the name of the MongoDB server. So that's interesting enough. Um, I want to see how I can. 
how would I stop just one container? That's what I really want to do. I've got my Docker Compose. How would I stop just one container? So here's everything that's running. If I want to stop the warehouse, I think I can just say Docker stop EA2. And it'll, yeah, okay, so it's stop, shutting down. Okay, so it's shutting down the instance cleanly. Okay, great, awesome. They're all iHost instances are wrapped in using blocks. Hmm, that's interesting. Stopping cancel. Stop canceled waiting for consumers to complete. Oh, I wonder if we had some retry going on. Okay. It's fun, maybe. So let's go back and look at our warehouse. This MongoDB 127001 is gonna be kind of a pain because we put MongoDB at the host name of MongoDB. Or did we call it Mongo? Um, looks like we called it Mongo. So let's just put Mongo here for the host name. Um, and we know that our container is running there, so we're going to switch to warehouse.startup. Yes, it should come from an environment variable. Thank you very much, but I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> these, are, these are razor sharp bits, but yes, that should come from an environment variable. So if I want to redo the Docker build of Twitch, slash warehouse. Uh, oh, I have to go up one folder, that's right. And what was it? Docker, docket, <laughs> docket build, dash T, twitch, slash warehouse, dash F, docker file dot warehouse, dot. Okay, so we changed that to use Mongo with that address. I could have just, I don't know why it doesn't map it to localhost. And then, okay, so there it is. Now, can I, how do I get this to run within the other compose window? That's the real tricky one. I guess I can just, oh, I think if I just go do Docker compose up, maybe, I don't know. Where I'm kind of a neophyte when it comes to some of this stuff. Some of the stuff is already running. Oh, so it just attached, but the warehouse started. The warehouse is up and running again. I'm getting all my log in here now. I'm probably getting it two places now. So this is where I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, now I don't know which one to break. Now I'm all confused. <laughs> well, let's go try to run some more clients through it. Let's go run some more orders through. Go run some orders through and see what happens. That's the website. That's some Saga stuff. That's Quartz doing all kinds of stuff. That's the warehouse doing its site. Hey, Sagas are working now. Added, removed. Okay, so we aren't blowing up the Saga anymore. That's good to know. We're deleting our jobs. We're triggering our triggers. We're allocation state removed. Okay, because we're unallocating the... Uh, just as we were doing before. Our allocations were being released. Allocation expired, allocation expired, allocation expired. Yeah, okay, so we're getting our messages. We're, we're, we're doing what we need to do there. That's awesome. Because yeah, we executed those scheduled events for those successful ones, okay. So that's all working. And it, I don't have to have all that project code everywhere. So that's, that's kind of dope. So now it's going to stop everything, and I think both my windows will stop. Yep, yeah, this one's stopping too. Yep, there's RabbitMQ stopping. Everybody's halting. They all exit now. Great, awesome. That was good. Okay, so that's like the warehouse moved over. Um, I guess theoretically it shouldn't be too hard to move the regular service over now, right? Let's give that one a shot. Um, go back over here. We have the sample service. This one's doing a little more because we have more stuff in it. We have request clients. We have some external dependencies. 
Uh, we're still talking to Mongo for this one, so we'll have to fix that. Um, 127 worked here because I was mapping that port over. Um, yeah, so we're going to have to do it the same kind of deal here. So I'm going to create a new project. We're going to call it sample.startup, just like we did the other one. Yeah, I'm not going to push the envelope today, but it will detect multiple platform startups in your folder. So if you actually put both startups in the same folder, you could run them in the same container image. But yeah, I just remembered that. I actually support multiple iPlatform startup registrations. Not going to do that today, but just know that that's a possibility where you could combine them. But we're, we're going we're gonna to play nice today. We're not going to we're not going to tempt fate. We've already tempted it enough, and it's, it's, it's been pretty kind so far. Um, so we're going to start this up. And by start it up, I mean we're going to put the actual startup package reference in here. That. We're going to rename it to sample startup. We are going to add our reference to our components is sample components this time. I mean, really, this is just glue. You could put this platform startup inside your sample components. In fact, I probably should or would, but I think when you're talking about separating infrastructure and all that fun stuff, it, it makes sense. But again, a project with one file in it, I don't see why you wouldn't. The, the dependencies are the same. It's all mass transit dependencies. So why would I not just put it in components? I don't know. Why don't I go put it in components? I don't think the dependencies of sample service would warrant anything like that. I mean, that's using RabbitMQ Redis. Yeah, I mean, that's doing some dependency setup. So I could change the Saga repository if I technically wanted to. But yeah, I don't think we'll do that for now, though. It's entertaining. Okay, so we're going to look at what was in here. We're going to take the initialization code out of there. We're going to add our dependencies and our mass transit configuration, and that's about it. Everything else, we're just jettisoning out the door. We'll go to our sample startup. I'm going to include all of those things. We're going to get rid of the stuff from the previous project, except I want to keep that Mongo name because that's what we're going to be running under now. So accept activities, the Mongo name instead of localhost. Uh, we don't call add bus. Um, I think I just yanked that code and it's there. So I don't have to do this. Oh yeah, I don't do this. I don't do this. <laughs> and these just become configurator. I'm adding the Mongo repository for that. I'm adding the request client for the for the submit order consumer, or the allocate inventory activity. Order state machine definition. OK, so that's good. So now I have the sample startup. It is actually building, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to come out here to, I'm going to switch to the other one. We'll go into source. Now I'm going to copy my dockerfile.warehouse to dockerfile-sample, because it's the sample service. I already have the Docker ignore, so I will edit the sample Docker file. Um, we're going to put this like part of the screen. Now this one's going to be different because we are going to just really go crazy here. And it's just sample.contracts components and startup. That was actually really easy. So we'll just save that out. Let's see here. Do we have Docker build in the history somewhere? Twitch slash sample. Sample. If it works, I'll be amazed. But oh, wait, sample warehouse. Oh. 
Did I forget something? No. Can't bother waiting for that. I need warehouse contracts because I have, um, I use those contracts to send to the, um, I, I need those contracts for the build. That's why I wasn't found. Or when I send the request client to the uh, warehouse service to allocate the inventory. What do I have happening here? Okay, that's my website. My console. I know what this is. <laughs> that's my service that was still running. Oh yeah, because I just rebuilt this service running as another thing. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of that because we're not going to use that anymore. So waiting on our Docker to build, our sample startup built. Looks like it's packaging. Got a couple warnings, but that's okay. Twitch sample. Okay, great. That built. I'm excited about that. This is where our Docker Compose is. We are now going to edit our Docker Compose again. By the way, I did get some feedback that my noise gate wasn't picking up too quick enough, and it was like making it so I you missed like the first 20 milliseconds of what I was saying. So I tweaked the settings on it. If it's better, let me know. If not, I can turn it off. I don't have a ton of background noise here, but that's just because it isn't thundering, lightning, raining, or you know anything else. I'm going to call this sample. Um, the image is twitch slash sample. Um, I'm going to change this to sample. We're going to use the same quartz scheduling service and I'm going to save it out. That's all I did was cut and paste warehouse, added sample in. Oh, I'm going to give this 5,680. Now when Docker Compose up, let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm highly optimistic. Not even cautiously, I'm highly optimistic. The other one worked, this one's got a rock and roll. I am just fairly confident there. There's some really good log watch solutions for Docker Compose that let you see this stuff. Obviously dumping this into something like that lets you look at centralized logging would be cool. Um, I'm still looking for a tool that's going to do that, but when I get there, it's going to be awesome. Um, oh yeah, look, hey, there's my sample service, rocking and rolling, all the exchanges combined. Let's go run my uh, sample client here. Let's look, this guy's finally connected. Okay, so my website in the background was just trying to reconnect to Rabbit because I had killed Rabbit. Now that Rabbit's back up, it's all reconnected. Thank you very much, Rabbit. Um, now I want to send some orders. Let's, let's send four orders and see what happens. Not seeing any red. That's a good sign. Oh, I saw something. I saw some error. Oh, I was supposed to see that error because the first order faulted. That's right. Um, oh, I got the internal server error. That's fun. What's going on there? What I got here? Message data was lot not loaded. Oh, because I added message data to this at some point. When did I do that? <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> okay, so I probably have a bad connection string to the message data server. So I wonder where that is. Something that I forgot. So let's go back and look at our program startup. I apparently didn't copy everything over. Oh, I'm sure it's another hard-coded Mongo reference. Like, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So, how did I screw up? Let me count the ways. First of all, <laughs> um, I had some code in the program CS I didn't move over yet. So, this is stuff. So, this thing was configuring the bus, 
And oh man, I forgot I had done the batch demo on this too. So that's even funner. So let's let's go through a couple of those things. We got to update this sample. All, all sorts of old code in here. Um, so yeah, we need to move this over. Now the use message data, that's a fun one because that's something I forgot to move to the sample startup. So now I have to go add that. So the configure bus method and my trackpad just went south. So we'll just have to use the keyboard only for now on. Um, so I have the MongoDB message repository here. I'm gonna import the missing reference. I'm gonna change it to Mongo because yes, it is hard coded for now, but I will move that to configuration in a future episode. I need to change these to configurator. And I'm not setting a prefetch count here because I'm not going to do that right now. Oh, but I have to because I have a message limit. So how do I do that? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to update this and hopefully it'll work. Um, when I did the episode on batching, God, I hate jumping all over the place like this. I feel like I, I'm just jumping all over the place. Um, I created a receive endpoint for this routing slip batch event consumer. You don't have to do that anymore because now I can just add it like a normal consumer and it'll work. Um, so did I put this in a different namespace? I think I did so that it wouldn't find it. Yeah, I put it in batch consumers. Yeah, so I don't auto discover that. Um, so I'm gonna just add it explicitly. And I'm going to create a consumer definition for it. You're getting like the tour de force today. Sorry about that. It's, it's just how it's going to go today. Consumer definition, routing slip batch consumer. So I need to create a consumer definition for this because, you know, I needed to. Um, and I'm going to set the concurrent message limit equal 20. I think this does what I want it to do, but if it doesn't, we'll find out. Either way, we're not going to really mess with that too much today. Um, but at least it'll make it so it registers. Um, so I'm going to add that one explicitly, and then I'm going to take out this explicit configuration. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm going to show the cool hotness. Yeah. Does this work? If this works, I'm going to be like, no, I don't think it does. Okay, this, this could be cool. This is something I've got to update in the documentation. And I'm not exactly sure how I do it, though. I feel like I'm going to go sideways here. Yeah, I don't remember where it is, so never mind. We're not going to worry about it right now. Oh. There is a cool new feature on this, and I'm trying to remember how to do it, but I just, I, oh, yeah, I know how to do it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun. Batch limit equals 10. Did I do that right? Oh, I think I need like a statement, Lambda. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, I don't need a statement, Lambda. I just got to use the method chain style. Or not. <laughs> set message limit, set time limit. Oh, and this is even uses my coolness, so I can just do s colon one, and it'll do one second. Okay, so now you can do that, <laughs> which I think is really cool. And I don't even need this definition anymore. Um, this was something I did because I got really embarrassed about that uh, that whole batch not being auto registered stuff. That's what happens when I embarrass myself. Um, yeah, so. So yeah, I think this is cool because now I can just set the options and following an options builder pattern that I stole from DB context and uh, entity framework is like, okay, well now I'm going to add a batch options. I'm going to set the message limit and the time limit and we're good to go. Okay, that problem's fixed. I no longer need this. Boom, out. That's set time seconds of five. All right, 
It's all good. Um, all right. So that's in there. We'll set the same time limit. Why not, right? Um, got the request library, not hard coded anymore. We're talking to MongoDB for the attachments. We don't need to configure the message scheduler because that's automatically done for us by the mass transit platform when I put the MT quartz equals in the compose. So that's an environment variable that gets set. Um, so that is at least one environment variable. Thank you very much. Um, great. So now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to jump over to my other console window because I need to build the sample again. Uh, the rebuild times on Docker is so quick. I just, I like it because it caches the restores. It's neat. The only thing that I haven't completely got working on the Mac yet is debugging inside a Docker container from Rider. It is supposed to work, but I just haven't gotten it to work yet. It keeps trying to use Mono instead of NetCore. So I don't know if I just have something weird or I have to wait for 2021. 2020.1, which is in like EAP 9 or something now, but I'm expecting that to drop any day. And when it does, I bet it has that all sorted out. Um, at least that's my hope. All right. Hey, Vincent, thanks for joining. Go eat some lunch. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but you know, I had popcorn, so yeah, that's a win. Um, all right, let's see if this runs. I built a new version of it. It should pull the latest because my Docker Compose says latest. Let all this stuff fire up. Oh, whoa, what am I doing here? Am I in the right one? Yeah, I'm in the right one. No, I'm not. Which folder am I in? Oh, no, I was in the wrong folder. Never mind. That's not what I want. <laughs> this is the one I want. <laughs> Did that one all shut down? Yeah, that one would go sideways. Okay. Too many terminal windows. Okay, so now we're going to fire this up. We got the latest sample. We got the latest warehouse. Everything's configured to talk to Mongo. Everything's retrying. Let me, let me, let me check some health of some stuff while we're sitting here. I know I mapped some local ports. I know I mapped like 5002. Okay, RabbitMQ clearly isn't ready yet because the mass transit bus is not ready, but the endpoints are ready to go. We're just waiting for a connection to the broker. Um, what about the other service? It's still waiting for RabbitMQ to get ready. So those things are reporting unhealthy at this point. Okay. Let's see, we get anything healthy yet? I'm probably still loading. I don't know what a good pull frequency is for that, but. Command R seems to be pretty quick. Okay, still loading, still loading. That was fun when you run stuff on a single core. Hey, we're healthy, look at that. We've got our, this must be our warehouse service because it has allocate inventory and allocation state. So all those endpoints are healthy. Um, looks like Quartz is healthy because we have that one. Uh, and what did I put my sample on, 5006? Okay, oh yeah, and so there's all of its endpoints. And I updated the, the response output of the platform so that it, it dumps out a JSON of all the health checks. Uh, so you can see order state, fulfill order, fault. You can add your own health checks. So like if you know your service depends on Mongo, you can add a health check for it and it'll add it. So you can tell if Mongo's there or whatever and it'll add it to the same health endpoint. It's just using the ASP.NET Core health check stuff. So yeah, so that's rocking. All right, awesome. If I go out here and I go to my other window, my website should be back up because it's reconnected to Rabbit. If I go to my console and I send myself four orders, what happens? Oh, look at that. It actually got my message data this time. I forgot about the message data thing. That was annoying. Um, processing a ton of stuff. Processing, processing. A little commander data flashback from the only good Star Trek of my generation is the next generation. All right, that worked. We, we got like stuff grinding. We got like all kinds of messages flying around. We got all sorts of love. Vincent, buddy, that is awesome. Come on, thanks for joining, man. Man, I can't imagine how things are out in California right now. I bet they're crazy though. I mean, everybody's staying at home now. That's why I'm doing this. It's just, it's fun to get online and you know crank some of this stuff out. Plus it's like been a real motivator to get all this stuff working. Yeah, yeah, work from home, work from home, work from home, don't go outside. 
Okay, so this is all working. I now have my two backend services running on the platform. I have, they're running up on Docker, they're created up. I have my front end sample API um, able to talk to all of those. And it's only communicating to RabbitMQ. It doesn't have any other dependencies on any, any other part of the system. So it only needs to be able to talk to RabbitMQ for the backend services. So that's, uh, I'm going to take a break for like 10 minutes, maybe 15. Um, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some more stuff and kind of show why this is cool. I mean, right now, I mean, this is neat. It's a lot cleaner than I was than the way I was starting it up before. But some of the cool things that you get, if you sneak a peek at the Docker Compose, you probably know where this is going. But you know, some other aspects of kind of building and operationalizing services. One of my key focuses lately has been how you bring SRE into a development practice from, you know, basically, you know, what do they call it? Inception to, de to, to uh, decommission, but, you know, getting around, you know, to going beyond DevOps and like just constantly spending time engineering and making your system more reliable and more available. Um, I think we got pretty far there in Emeryville. You know, with both Albert and Vincent on, you know, they, they were part of making that happen. And it was all, you know, was, we had a great team out there. It was a lot of fun. Um, we built some cool stuff that's still in production with really old versions of mass transit by today's standards. So, um, so I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in like five, 10 minutes. And uh, I'm going to show how now that we have this all running up in Docker, some of the cool things that we're going to get from that. So catch you back in a little bit. And uh, thanks for joining.